Um, and David made the the observation that the spell cast against him didn't work because the spirit that lives in him is greater than that of the world. But the spirit that lived within Muhammad clearly was not able to prevent a spell being cast against him. Um, so take from that what you will. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you may not know this uh, since you don't specialize in, in Islam, uh, but the the kind of Islam that's propagated to the the public, the Salafi Islam, is only a in reality a small minority of Islam. Global Islam is very synchronistic. It, it has a lot of elements of magic and and practice of traditional uh, tribal religions, uh, especially mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia that it's very much a, yeah. a combination of the existing culture and the practice, which includes the practice of magic. So there's definitely a lot of magic elements in Islam. And the, the Sufism, um, which is often considered to be the highest form uh, of Islam by, you know, obviously that's going to depend on who you ask, but the, it, they think that, and, and this is very much ingrained in you know mainstream Islam, that the words of the Quran have magical powers that you gain. Um, I'm I'm looking for the right word, but benefits of some sort, right? The, it's not blessings. exactly a spell per se. Yeah, blessings or, uh, but but it's not just like generalized blessings. It's like specific, like reciting specific okay. words give you specific things so it's not exactly like a spell but it's very kind of similar that the words themselves have magical powers mm. uh, of course only when you say them in arabic of course seventh century arabic yes yes <laughs> so it's definitely uh, an element of islam we, we see uh, I mean, we already made this comparison, but I'm going to say it again, that we, we see Muhammad kind of just grabbing a little bit or, you know, whoever was creating Islam, whether it's one individual or multiple people, you know, there's some historical debate there. But for the sake of argument, let's just call it that person or people, Muhammad, you see, like, mm -hmm. you know, grabbing a little bit from here, a little bit from here, just kind of mixing it all together. So you end up getting a lot of elements of traditional pagan religions of Arabia mixed into Islam. And a lot of these things have survived to today. Now, people don't necessarily know why they're doing these things. They, they don't know the historical origins. I'm not saying that the average Muslim on the street is intentionally practicing witchcraft. And right. Don't get me wrong. But, but they're doing things that have their origins in these pagan ideas. And as a result, people who are very knowledgeable and are, you know, high up so to speak in the the pyramid of knowledge they realize that there are magical elements behind a lot of what goes on in ordinary islam i think there's a good conversation there talking about pagan influences on islam and christianity um correct me if i'm wrong but i believe that a lot of the practices done in mecca come from pagan roots like kissing the stone, running back and forth between the hills and the area, things like that. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And, you know, if, if we take the Hadith seriously, you would have some of the companions of Muhammad saying, I wouldn't have done this. It seems like paganism to me, but Muhammad said to do it, so it must be okay. Mm. And the point I have of comparison with Christianity is that there actually are things, I think, that may have been pagan in origin that were grafted into christianity but it's not it, there's a, a a difference between that and what i've seen done in islam um people are going to say that i'm lying about that probably but um it, it's kind of like christianizing a pagan practice it's not some people will say that all the religions are not all the religions all the holidays are pagan i don't think they are by the way inspiring philosophy has a great series of videos on religions and why they're not pagan i highly suggest you look at those uh, but an uh, example that comes to mind is Paul talking to the Judaizers or to the people who were being influenced by the Judaizers. And those are people who were saying that you had to do the Old Testament laws um, in order to be a Christian. 
those that's not a pagan thing but i think around that same time he's talking to people who are concerned with going to an unbeliever's house and eating the the meat that they had which had been sacrificed to their idol which is absolutely a pagan practice and he says you know this obviously isn't something that's brought into pagan or not not pagan that's brought into christianity as a practice we don't sacrifice meat to idols but he's saying um you can go and eat that meat because, well, you didn't sacrifice it to an idol. You're not, the, the conscience matters here. This is a, a potentially pagan thing that a lot of people might turn their nose up at, but you can go do it because God lives within you and he's stronger than those things. And this is not something that you're willingly taking in pardon to turn away from God. Um, so, yeah, I think that's an interesting comparison. I, I don't know yeah, that... of, I don't know of scripture or hadiths or something in Islam, which would say that you can go do these practices, but remember who Allah is. Um, it seems to me that pagan practices brought into Allah, uh, Islam remain pagan practices. Yeah, I, I think so. That's an important clarification there. And, uh, you know, to be clear, I haven't seen any solid evidence that Christianity has taken any customs or, or um, uh, traditions from uh, pagan background but even if they did you know even if christians do something that pagans used to do and it would be redeeming of that that thing that everything is provided by god you know right to to use an example that isn't actually pagan but people often say is you know a christmas tree right and uh, yeah. let's say if, for argument I know that one and, and it's because you know that connection with nature and all and yeah all the pagans was, used to do that except they didn't there's no evidence they ever did but you know like, the naturalism God was brought in by margaret tree. murray right <laughs> the the god of god is the creator of the tree there's nothing about a tree that makes it pagan so mm -hmm. if christians take a, a tree and they use it as a, a uh, you know, they put it in their home because it, it creates nice fragrance and it's pretty to look at and it has nothing to do with any sort of pagan ritual, then right. it's not pagan, even if some pagan did the same thing. Until you but kneel in Islam, down in front of it, apparently. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, we accidentally bow down to the tree because we, we bow down to put presents under it. And, uh, now you, now you, know, you got to do all kinds of stuff nonsense. to cleanse yourself. Right. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> But in Islam, it's not about your intentions. It, it's, it's solely about your actions. Uh, mm -hmm. That if, if you do something that is wrong, uh, that Allah has uh, forbidden, even if it's accidental, right? Even if, if you do it by accident, right? then you're still at the same level of guilt. Similarly, if you do something that... Um, is technically not like has the same effect as what's forbidden, but is not technically what's forbidden. That's perfectly okay. So an easy example yeah. of this would be that interest is forbidden, right? You, that you can't charge people interest. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? In the Islamic world, they still have banks. They just charge fees instead. <laughs> that they charge fees, they charge it. So the way they do it through a contract. So what tradition, what they usually do is someone say that an object's worth a hundred dollars and someone wants to um wants to buy it now and they don't mm -hmm. actually have a hundred dollars they will write a contract where they pay 125 dollars for that object that's worth a hundred dollars and they pay it over time with no interest so it has the same exact effect as interest but it's not technically right. interest and that's allowed in islam so it's all about I, the technicalities i'm reminded of a quote from futurama Technically correct. The best kind of correct. Right. <laughs> you, you think you think God cares about technicalities? Like, of course he does. You're not going to get around the law of God. If if a law is the true God and he says don't do interest, you're not going to get around it by a technicality. If Yahweh is the true God and he says don't use interest, you're not going to get around it by a technicality. It seems like people are thinking they can fool the creator. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that tends to be what it, it's all about. Mm. You know, 
uh, Lloyd, who's a regular guest on this channel, puts it well that Islam is a, a religion of laws and lawyers. And mm -hmm. what do lawyers do? They find ways to get around the law for the sake of their client, right? That, yeah. that if you're accused of doing something, yeah. they say, oh, he, he, it looks like he did that, but he actually did this very similar thing that the law doesn't forbid. And that tends to be yeah. how things work in Islam, unfortunately. That's so draining. So you're saying that Muslims make very good lawyers? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> they potentially make very good lawyers. They have lots, lots of experience on, lots on of training. You know, finding loopholes. <laughs> yeah.